Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel or if it's your first time here, welcome. I hope you enjoyed this video as well as my channel. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more from me. If you haven't seen them already, I did do a roundup of all of my favorite products from 2016 and I also spoke about all of my favorite underrated products of 2016. So of course, for my last 2016 roundup, I have to talk about all of my most disappointing products of 2016. Sometimes you gotta get down to the nitty gritty and talk about those products that didn't just really make the cut. Now I really wanted to emphasize though that I'm not talking about products that I hate because I don't necessarily hate any of these products. I think hate is a very, very strong word. They either just didn't meet my expectations or they just really didn't work for me. And I also wanna say that some of the products here could be some of your favorites. That's also totally okay because not everything works for everybody. What floats my boat may not float yours and yeah, that's basically my little disclaimer before we start. Do not forget to let me know in the comments what your most disappointing product was in 2016 because I would definitely like to know and I'm sure everybody else would. So let's get right into it. So these dripping eyes can only mean one thing. This is a Kylie palette. This is the holiday 2016 palette. Firstly, I really do love the bronze and burgundy palette. This is not to say that all the Kylie palettes are not good. So my expectations were high when it came to the holiday palette. I expected the palette to be just as good as the other two and I was wrong. First of all, I think the color selection in here is sort of strange. I don't really think this is a very cohesive palette. I don't think that you can create many full looks with this. There's not really like a color story to the palette. So the pigmentation for I would say maybe like 90% of the shadows in here with the exception of maybe one or two really is not quite strong. I really feel like the other palettes did a much better job as far as like the quality of the eyeshadows. And I also feel like most of these shadows in here just don't really pack a lot of punch. That is the reason why I would say that the Kylie Holiday palette was definitely a disappointment for me in 2016. So staying on the topic of eyeshadows, let's talk about this Charlotte Tilbury quad. So this is the Vintage Vamp quad. I really feel like the actual formula of the eyeshadows just really does not make sense considering how much you have to pay for this. Actually applying them to the eyes is quite difficult because they apply pretty choppy. They're not easy to blend at all and the pigmentation is sort of weak so you do have to build them up and it is pretty difficult I find to build them up and get a really nice smooth blended finish. The champagne shade is definitely the only shade in here that I would say I actually do like. It has a very like buttery and metallic formula. I do like the way that one applies but the gold shade is so incredibly stiff. You can barely get any product picked up with a brush or even with your finger so it is really difficult to build up or to even just you know get anything out of it <sighs> now moving on to a concealer this is the born this way concealer from Too Faced now I was super excited about this concealer I thought that it had the potential to be like a new holy grail because it is marketed as like a naturally radiant concealer now as a girl with dry skin I love anything that has radiant in the name because I just imagine my skin glowing and it makes me very happy so I was super excited to try this out however I was pretty disappointed because I do feel like this concealer just does not work for my skin type I do know a lot of people who do really enjoy this product but it just wasn't for me I felt like it looked really heavy underneath my eyes and it looked very very cakey and really no matter what I did and it really just didn't live up to its claims for me that is why this is one of my most disappointing products of 2016 unfortunately now another concealer that I would say is one of my most disappointing products is the Stila Aqua Glow serum concealer now I initially bought the serum foundation before buying this concealer and I love that foundation. It's probably one of my favorite foundations for like everyday wear. It just makes my skin look so glowy but it's also so natural looking. So I was pretty excited to see that they had almost like a companion concealer but it didn't work at all. It's strange because even though it is such a thin and watery formula, it still looks cakey because it really does attach to a lot of those dry patches that you have. It also gave me basically no coverage. So all it really left me with was just really dry and crusty looking under eyes and no coverage at all. So it sort of just, it left me hanging a little bit. So now moving on to the most expensive water I ever bought myself. This is the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. Now the reason why I bought this was because I saw Makeup by Mario, who is Kim Kardashian's makeup artist, use this. So the reason why I'm disappointed by this product is because I just don't really like the way it performs and I don't like the way it makes my skin feel. I find that this actually makes my skin feel 
almost oily when I spray it on my face and it almost adds like a heaviness to my skin, which I really don't like. It doesn't feel like MAC Fix Plus or the Urban Decay setting sprays where as soon as you spray it, it sort of just settles onto your skin and you don't feel it anymore. You actually feel this on your skin. Your skin almost feels like wet, which I really just don't like. And I just find that it honestly makes my face look too dewy to the point where it looks oily. This will just stay on my vanity because the bottle's pretty, but I definitely will not be using it and that is why I'm disappointed by it. <sighs> All right, I've got a liquid lipstick here. These are the MAC Retro Matte Liquid Lipsticks. Now this formula is probably one of my least favorite liquid lipstick formulas, unfortunately. I just feel like this formula crumbles like nothing else on my lips. They really do make my lips feel quite literally like a desert. Definitely isn't the best look when you just have your like lipstick crumbling down your chin throughout the day. That's the reason why unfortunately I was disappointed by these. I just feel like the formula definitely could have been better. So next I have the Sleek Highlighting Palette. This is the Solstice Palette. Now I did buy this originally because so many YouTubers were talking about it because they just loved it so much. This is probably one of the most unflattering highlighters that I've ever put on my face because believe it or not, there is such a thing as a highlighter that is just way too metallic and way too intense. It really accentuated every single pore on the tops of my cheekbones. It did not look good in natural lighting and it was just too much. It's as simple as that. So I never reach for this palette at all. It sort of just sits in the back of my drawer. It doesn't really work for my taste or my preferences and I sort of wish I just didn't pick it up in the first place, but it happened. Next, I have this Bobbi Brown Nude Finish Illuminating Powder in the shade Nude. Now, I bought this on a whim when I was at Sephora because I was talking to one of the sales associates at Sephora and she recommended this powder to me because I told her I did have dry skin and at the time I was looking for a nice setting powder that wouldn't totally mattify my skin and that would also not dry it out. So she did recommend this powder because she said that it worked great for her, but unfortunately this powder just did not work for me at all. So this is supposed to be an illuminating powder and it's really confusing to me because it has like actual chunks of sparkle in here, which is a little bit weird because I don't really know anybody who wants to set their face with a powder that has actual intense shimmer in it because then you'll just end up looking sort of sparkly all over your face and a little bit like a disco ball, but yet you can't use this as a cheek highlighter. It just clinged to every single one of the dry patches on my face. It clinged to dry patches I didn't even know existed. Definitely did not work for me and that is the reason why I would say it was disappointing and also a little bit confusing. <laughs> so so for the next product, I know some of you may be a little bit surprised that I'm mentioning it as one of my most disappointing products of 2016, but just hear me out. I have my reasons. The Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette just wasn't for me. Now this palette was like so intensely hyped up. People were going crazy over it. And of course the hype obviously worked on me because I did end up buying it the first round that it was released. And when I got it, I was just like, not that crazy about it. I sort of just didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I just want to put out there that I do not think this palette is bad. I think that the quality eyeshadows are actually really nice. They're very comparable to the chocolate palettes if you're familiar with that formula. I simply don't really feel like it was worth all that hype. At first glance, there are definitely some colors in here that are really gorgeous. Honestly, I would love to like pick out of the palette and put in like my singles palette so that I could use them more often. When I look at this palette personally, I don't really feel very inspired by it. I don't really love all the tones in here. A lot of these metallic shades, while they are pretty as shades, I wouldn't actually wear. And I also do wish there were a few more mattes in here to sort of ground the palette a little bit more and make the palette a little bit more wearable so that you could create more looks. Because I do feel like having a nice variety of mattes in a palette is so important. It really does open the door for so many more eye looks. The other reason why I'm just not really into this palette is because of the scent. Some people may love it, some people may hate it, some people may not care at all, but for me, I'm very sensitive when it comes to smells. This scent just smells way too artificial to me. And even though you don't smell it once it's on your face, just even opening up the palette, you get a really strong whiff of it and it's a little bit too much for me. It's just not my favorite, <laughs> let's just put it that way. And that is why this is definitely just a disappointing product for me personally. 
it's just me okay guys it's just me so now I do have a few foundations here to talk about the first one that I want to discuss is the Estee Edit skin glowing balm now I love I think like 99% of the products from Estee Edit I even included the Estee Edit glowy primer I totally forget what it's called in my best of beauty and I also included their liquid highlighters in my favorite underrated products of 2016 so I obviously love their face products I remember when I first saw this in the store I was so excited about it because it is called the skin glowing balm so I sort of imagine this as more of a everyday product Product that would just give me that small amount of coverage that I wanted while also making my skin look really nice and healthy and glowy and this product sort of does that it definitely does not have a lot of coverage it has even less coverage than a typical tinted moisturizer so I would only recommend this honestly if you have near to perfect skin and you really just want to cover up maybe a touch of discoloration and you also want to add a little bit of a glow and honestly I probably would wear this product on my no makeup makeup days if it wasn't for the extremely extremely strong floral scent like I said I'm really sensitive when it comes to smells I don't love it when my makeup smells like anything I'd rather no scent this has such a strong floral scent that lingers throughout the whole entire day it does not go away as soon as you apply it it stays and because it is right on your face you will smell it throughout the whole entire day I remember wearing this product for the first time and having to take it off like halfway throughout the day because the scent was just so overpowering for me and it sort of just ruined the product for me honestly so I would say that if you're sensitive to scents or if you have sensitive skin I would probably avoid this however if you're neither of those things and you feel like you just want something that gives like the slightest amount of coverage and gives your skin a really nice glow then you actually may really like this product so there you go now, now the next Sunday that I want to talk about is the Becca Aqua Luminous Perfecting Foundation. So this is basically a very like watery serum like formula. It's supposed to give your skin a really nice glow while still being very, very lightweight. And this gave me a very similar effect to the Stila Serum Concealer where it just attached to every single dry patch on my face. It's separated no matter what I did. I tried different primers. I tried no primer at all. I tried different moisturizers. I played with this so much because I was so desperate for it to work because I really thought that I was just doing something wrong but it just didn't work unfortunately and that is why I was disappointed by it so the next product that I wanted to talk about is actually a product that I don't currently have with me it has gone into makeup heaven I did throw it out because it just gave me a very bad experience and I was very angry at it so I just threw it in the trash and didn't look back and it is the Marc Jacobs I think it was called the Velvet Noir mascara now the reason why this mascara disappointed me is because it um betrayed me i tried the mascara for the first time i went to school and i didn't look at myself in the mirror throughout the whole day because you know i was in school i was busy then i went to my car after my class popped down the mirror and what did i see oh I saw a disaster going on on my eyeballs. There was black mascara, I'm not kidding guys, like from here to here. I couldn't even believe it because I was walking around for like a few hours looking like that and I don't understand why none of my friends said anything. I don't know if they are also out to sabotage me. I do know people who like it and who don't have a problem with it, but I don't know. It just really didn't react well with my eyeballs and it really, really smudged like you have no idea. And of course, it's Marc Jacobs. It's expensive, so it's not really the result I was hoping for. So I do actually have another product that I want to mention, but I also cannot find anywhere. So it is the Anastasia. I think it's the Ultimate Glow Kit. Previous Anastasia Glow Kits, I did really love. The formula was so nice and buttery. They laid on the skin so beautifully. They were too metallic, but they give you a really beautiful glow. They were just really, really nice highlighters. So I sort of expected the same with the Ultimate Glow Palette. And unfortunately, I feel like the formula was a little bit different compared to the other glow palettes. I did feel like it was a little bit chunkier the formula wasn't quite as smooth and in my experience it gave me a pretty unflattering highlight it was very shimmery and just didn't really lay too nicely on the skin it wasn't as like buttery and smooth so that is definitely another product that I was disappointed by just because the past glow kits were just gorgeous and I really just expected the same with this one but didn't get it so. now the last one of my disappointing products of 2016 I did have one right over here where did it go there it is it was hiding it's the ColourPop Liquid Lipstick. Now I was sort of in denial with how much I didn't really like the ColourPop Liquid Lipstick because I kept on buying more and more and more because 
there's no denying ColourPop makes some good colors and it's so hard not to get sucked into all the beautiful colors that ColourPop has and forget that I don't really like the formula. The Ultra Matte Lips, similar to the MAC lipsticks, are really, really dry on my lips and they crumble like crazy. No matter what I do, the formula just totally like sucks all life out of my lips and then falls down. So if you are looking at the ColourPop website, I would definitely recommend the Ultra Satins. Those are gorgeous. Probably some of my favorite lipstick formulas in general. They have a bit more of like a sheen to them. Very subtle though, more of like a satin sheen, obviously as the name suggests, and they do not dry your lips. So that concludes all of my most disappointing products of 2016. So I really hope you guys found this video helpful. Once again, do not forget to let me know what your most disappointing product of the year was down below. Of course, give this video big thumbs up and subscribe if you are not subscribed already and I will see you guys next time. Bye!